Hello lovely people, welcome once again to Start Up Hustle. Today I've got this amazing business opportunity for you guys. Do you want to invest in farming but you don't have the necessary skill sets? You don't have the time or you just don't want to get your hands dirty? Don't worry, cry. Today, I've got the shortcut process ever. There's this amazing startup company in Ghana called Grow For Me. So what they basically do is they take your money and they invest in farming. All you have to do is to sit at the comfort of your home, relax whilst they do all the hard work. I'm so delighted to have the head of sales with us here today. I call her the boss lady. She's all the way from the UK, but currently with us here in Ghana. She's called Lorraine Hannah Wright. She's an entrepreneur and she's got a lot of side hustles. Without wasting much time, I'm going to head to Zoom so we can have a conversation with her. Don't go anywhere. Please stay with us till the end. And trust me, you don't want to miss this amazing opportunity. Let's get started. Hello guys, so as I said, I've got the boss lady right here with us, all the way from the UK, but currently in Ghana, GH. Um, she's an entrepreneur, she's got a lot of side hustle, and she's now the um, head of sales for Grow For Me. Um, Lorraine, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, um, I know you're a very, very busy lady. But thank you so much for having the time to talk to my audience. I've got hungry audience that wants to invest, that wants to start businesses. So, so having you here with us today, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So today, all we want to know about is, um, I wanted to um, give us um, like more details about Grow For Me um, and take us through the process. So I'm going to leave you with you. I'll try not to interact. But if I have questions, yes, if I have questions along the way, um, um, I'll let you know. So what is great for me? Or just take it. Yeah, thank you. Firstly, thank you very much once again for the opportunity to be on your, your channel. I've been following your channel and I love it. You know, the oh, content is Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, you know, thank it's you. what people need to hear, you know, sometimes... Mm especially when it comes to businesses and things like that. Some people are very secretive of how, I remember watching your, one of your, 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 your shows around, um, for instance, the, you know, buying and selling, what can you buy from other places and sell, yes, for example. Yes, the mini potential, people, yep. Exactly, some people don't even give you that information. You gave a whole list of potential vent suppliers that you can go to. And some people won't even give that information. You have to pay them before you do this, before you do that. And I'm just, you know, thankful to you to allowing everyone the opportunity, the transparency in terms of opportunities for, for people. Oh, you're so. welcome. You're, I feel like um, the youth in Ghana now, um, they, we need information, if that makes mm. sense. A lot of the youth want to do something by themselves. And, and um, I started this channel because um, I was also looking for information, but it was so difficult. So I was like, OK, if I have the information now, why don't I also give it out? Yeah, mm. and that's why I started Startup Hustle, basically to share ideas and to also bring people on board like yourself to enlighten the youth so you can direct us. Because I know a lot of people got like money just sitting in their bank account, but they need someone to direct them, if that makes sense. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so absolutely. instead of them just having the money sitting down, they can actually mm. invest in something like Great For Me. I'm a, I'm, I'm a customer, by the way, just to let you know. <laughs> Yes, yes. And so Thank far, I, I love the process. Everything is basically online. It's just click, click, click. And it's yeah. easy, easy. That's why I have you here today. Please talk to my Thank audience. You. Yeah, please. Brilliant. Thank you. And I think when we mention investment, I want to let everyone know straight off the bat, this doesn't require huge amounts of money for you to get involved. So if you're watching this thinking, oh, you need to have so much money left in the bank. Don't worry about that. This starts, there is as little as 200 cities or even 175 Ghana cities, equivalent wow. of 25 pounds, 30 dollars for you to start working with us at Grow For Me. Just to let you know straight off the bat, um, that's the minimum for you to start work um, or to start working with us with Grow For Me. So Grow For Me. So my name is Lorraine Wright, first and foremost. Um, as mentioned by Prince, I am normally based in the UK. Um, when I get the chance, I'm in Ghana um, to represent this company, which is an amazing agri-tech startup called Grow For Me. Now, before I go into the slides, I am sharing my screen so hopefully everyone could see it. Um, growth for me, think about it 
in the sense of I'm sure everyone is aware of Uber and Bolt. I know even on this channel there was also a video on how um, you can get started in that area. Um, but think about it as an Uber or Bolt of agriculture. When you are requesting an Uber or you're requesting a Bolt, you're going from a place A to place B and you're using someone else's car and using a driver that you don't know. That is very similar to what we are also trying to do. You are using a farm that is not yours and a farmer that you don't know. So we do it in that, we do it in that context. Um, and I say in the context of Uber, just to give you an idea of how we work. So it's not so alien to people um, who are coming into this. So we are essentially an agritech startup that enables anyone, wherever you are in the world, you can be in the US, you can be in Australia, you can be in Europe, you could be in um, Dubai, you can be in wherever in the world, you can even be in Ghana, and you can get involved in Grow For Me um, with as little as 200 Ghana cities or the equivalent. Wow. Wow. Now we we essentially enable anyone to farm, and you can farm literally. Apologies, I'm just literally getting the phone because I'm, I'm going to switch my going off. Um, you can we literally enable anyone to farm and generate some reasonably good profits, anywhere from between five percent up to thirty percent return on your sponsorship. Now the way we work and the model we work with, and I was explaining to you, especially with the Uber model, is that we work with experienced farmers, and these farmers farmers are smallholder farmers. So what that means, they're farmers that have on average about six to 20 acres of land available to them. And because they have that access, um, because they are smallholder farmers, they don't necessarily have access to what larger scale uh, uh, farmers will have access to. For instance, irrigation methods. Mm. A lot of these farmers are relying on the rain. And those people that are in Ghana last year, they will know, for example, that it didn't rain as much as it's rained this year in Ghana. So these smallholder farmers are in need of support, are in need of experience, they're in need of investment. And what you're doing as sponsors is you're bringing the much needed investment that they require for growth for me to facilitate and work with them so they can grow more. So we have on one side, the sponsor, so anyone watching this 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 uh, video today and are interested in sponsoring, you are becoming a sponsor. Then you will put in your money through Grow For Me, us, the platform, and we will facilitate to get in that funding to the farmer who will then grow crops on your behalf. And then we at Grow For Me will then grow, support that, the, the farmer as they grow. And then once the items have reached harvest stage, we would work with them to then trade the commodities in order to generate a return. So I hope that makes sense so far. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. Yep, yep. Okay. So basically, so um, we just, in, if I've got like 200 cities, I basically give it to grow for me and you guys will facilitate with the farmers and, yep. and, and like organize everything. So I basically just sit in the comfort of my home, like basically That's invest it. and forget about it. Is that what you're That's trying it. to say? Awesome. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. So, I mean, you use the terminology, forget about it, but most often than not, what we do is we like to provide transparency throughout the process. Mm. So once you've given the money, um, we provide imagery um, in the sense wow. of photos as well as satellite imagery. So once farming has started, so you'll be notified that farming has commenced. And once it's commenced, you can go into the platform and you can see the four stages of the farming as it progresses. You can see the stages of us preparing the land. You can then see the stages of us planting. You can then see the stages of the growth and the monitoring stage. And then lastly, the harvesting stage. So that's oh, there to provide you with transparency as it progresses through the process. So you, you can be at home, wherever you are in Australia, mm. in Europe, in America, you can be at home, but you can also track and monitor the progress of the farming um, as, it, as, it, as it progresses. Okay, and, and all this is done on the Grow For Me platform. Absolutely, growthforme.com. Wow. Anyone that wants to sign up, the link is going to be below the video, as I'm yeah. sure yeah. Um, everyone will know, so they can sign up. Now, 
one of the important things to note for us is we grow high demand crops. Everyone always asks mm. us, can you grow this? Can you grow that? Can you grow that? <laughs> we focus on maize, soya bean, pineapple and rice at the moment. Those are the four main crops that we grow right now. Very soon, we'll be growing pepper. Um, but we focus on these because number one, they are in high demand. Okay. And number two, we are a official registered broker on the Ghana Commodity Exchange, wow. which means that we can only trade things that are listed on the Commodity Exchange, right? Mm. Um, so, um, for instance, only recently was there the approval for cocoa to be traded through the Commodity Exchange. So because that's now available on Commodity Exchange, we can now start to look at ways and means to start to grow that. So okay. we are making sure that we follow the, the, we, we like to be part of the regulatory bodies to ensure that we are doing things in the right way. Wow. So the, the good thing about us is that we are Security and Exchange Commission approved. So in Ghana, those people that live in Ghana are aware of Bank of Ghana and the Bank of Ghana oversees an organization called the Security and Exchange Commission, which is a note who have approved us to continue the work that we do. And then the Security and Exchange Commission then oversee the Ghana Commodity Exchange, which, which is where we then trade the commodities once they have been harvested. So I hope you're with me so far and I'm making yes, sense. Yes, 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 yes. You're making a lot of sense. Wow. Okay. So one important thing to know is that we operate in a profit sharing model. So this is an investment per se, because typically when you invest in something, you're buying an asset, right? Here, you're not buying a farm, you're not buying something per se, tangible, you are sponsoring. And what that means is that you providing the initial capital, once the items have been grown and harvested, we will facilitate the trade and the trade, the profits generated from the, pre the trade is what, what will be split to generate the returns. So I'll give you an example. Let's say that you sponsored today, mm. I don't know, for the sake of argument, let's say you sponsored a million dollars. Let's just put that out there. Yeah. If you sponsored a million dollars um, and then we made a million dollars profit, that a million dollar profit will then be split between you, who will get 50%, the farmer who will get 35% and growth me as a platform who will get 15%. Or okay, let me take so, a different so, so the sponsor get the highest. The sponsor gets the highest. Correct. Okay. Correct. And the okay. farmer gets 35%. Um, so let me give you another example. Let's, yeah. let's do it with 200 cities, right? So you sponsor mm. today, 200 Ghana cities, which is roughly 35 us dollars. Um, so that 200 cities, let's say again, we made, I don't know, a hundred city profit. 200 cities, you will get your principal amount back mm. and the hundred city profit will then be split between you who will get $50, that 50 US, sorry, the 50 um, Ghana cities. And then the rest will be split between the farmer who will get 35% and then growth me who will get 15%. So that is the profit sharing model that we operate by. Okay, are there any risks involved like, how, how, have they been a time that um, the sponsor didn't get any returns? Great question. Great question. At our company, we're all about transparency. So we okay. are very, it's very important for us to explain to you um, both the positive sides and the negative sides. And the negative, side. yes. Correct. So with all forms of investment, there is always mm. risk. Your capital, yes. your possible amount is always at risk. And I will be doing a disservice to everyone on this call if I came here and I promised um, that we're going to generate a certain percentage of profits for you. I cannot promise that and I cannot guarantee that. Hmm. But we do the best we can to mitigate as many risks as possible. Now, to take a step back, um, last year with our May sponsors, they got a return on their sponsorship of 27% wow. return on investment. And that's within that the six months. That is very, period. very good. In six months, right? That's good. Wow. Um, I wish I threw, I wish I had a million dollars and threw a million dollars <laughs> into it. Wow. Anyway. Um, then our soya bean sponsors, they got a return on sponsorship of 24% return on their sponsorship. Wow. Now, the next round of maize, unfortunately, it was a negative return. Now, I want to explain to you this. Mm -hmm. Last year Please in explain. Ghana, sure. <laughs> Last year, he's thinking about this because he's a customer, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and to be fair, I am a customer first and foremost. I came across this company as a customer first okay. before I came on board the team. Um, I loved the concept. I loved where they were going and they asked me to come on board um, the team. So um, initially I have the hat on or the wig on or the weave on as, <laughs> as, as a customer first and foremost before an exec on the team. Now, last year in Ghana and all of our crop growth is in Ghana. I want to be very clear on that. Last year in Ghana, the rainfall was not as much as it was in this year. That I mean, I'm sure anyone in Ghana knows that there's been a lot more rain in the last couple of months than there has been an entire year last year. Now, because of that, it affected some of the crop growth. So what, me, what that means, especially because a lot of the, the farmers that we work with are rain-fed farms, which means they are dependent on the rain, as opposed to, you know, irrigation methods that, you know, larger scale farmers will be, will be familiar with. So what it meant is that, unfortunately, the crops, the, the value or the amount of crops that we were expect, expecting didn't happen. What we did as a company, because our reputation is on the line and we had hundreds, literally hundreds of sponsors that we did not want to disappoint, we took it upon ourselves to reinvest the little returns that came back into this oh, wow. year so that we can take advantage of this year's crop cycles. We did that with the approval of our sponsors and we got them and we've re we're about to harvest and trade those items. And I could say categorically, we've got far more in terms of the yield this year than we did last year. Wow. So it was right wow. of us to do that, but we can't guarantee we'll always do that every year in case every there is a failure. Year. Mm. Yeah. But we've learned from that. What we've mm. done is that part of our due diligence process when we work with farmers, we will look for maybe to work with farmers that are maybe by um, water sources. Maybe they are close to you know rivers and things like that so that we can ensure in the event of drought or conditions where there's not enough rain, we can also try and help them to source um, uh, waters in different way. Because irrigation is really expensive. Now, if we were going to do irrigation techniques for these farmers, the cost of investing in growth for me will be a lot higher. But we want to keep it quite low because okay. our, our model is really to support the grassroots farmers for the time being before we start to grow with them. As they grow, we grow with them. So we want to do that in a step-by-step -step process. Okay. Okay. So yep. I hope that answers yep. your, your question. Yeah, that, that. Uh, with, with every investment, there's, there are some risks, but at least growth for me um, um, did something to mitigate the risk, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One and, other and, thing. Please go ahead. Yeah, and I like the transparency in that. Yeah, because most companies will just be like, okay, um, sorry, guys, um, your money is, I don't know, is gone, if mm, that makes sense. Yeah. But at least yeah. um, you guys kept your sponsors um, um on on the toy yeah you you gave them all the information so yeah this is really good yeah. one thing i i remember speaking to um some another um another forum and they mentioned that there was a company that does very similar to what we do unfortunately they guaranteed their sponsors a percentage return we don't guarantee do yeah they you guarantee. can't guarantee and that company that company folded they went bankrupt because yeah. they were and this was during the pandemic because you could mm. never guarantee the outcomes no. of agriculture right you can't so even guarantee life you know so you, <laughs> <laughs> you can't the greatest fear in life is tomorrow yes so you yes know. you can't so well as a business no you can never guarantee Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So Can't. anyone that's looking for these kind of companies to work with and invest in, mm. look for the transparency, look for, yes, their past records, but bear in mind that past performance does not equal future returns. Just look at the ways and means that we mitigate risks as and when they come. Okay. One thing that we do at Growth For Me is we act as a crowd farming platform. So what that means, crowd farming in itself is a mitigation measure. Mm. What that means is that, let's say everyone watching this video, I know you've got thousands and thousands of viewers, right? If everyone yep, yep, watches- we're growing each day, yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Imagine every single person today yes. goes to growforme.com and they click on the link below and they decide to sponsor minimum 200 cities, right? And mm -hmm. let's say that we raise $100,000 from that. 
Mm -hmm. That $100,000 will be dispersed across a number of different farms in a particular region that we are working with. Mm. Now we work in regions like the Bono East region, we work in the Northern region around Tamale, specifically Gushegu. <coughs> we work in the Eastern region, Western region, etc. Now we take the region and then we work with different farmers in that region. We won't say that a hundred thousand dollars will be put into one farm because that's a risk in itself. Yes. So correct. we need to disperse. Mm. We don't want to concentrate the risk. You know how it is in Ghana. It could literally be raining in one piece of land or one road, and then the next road is not raining, which yep. is, was was news. To, which was that's Ghana crazy. for you. <laughs> I, it, it, I, the other day I was driving through somewhere and I drove, it was raining here, then it wasn't raining, and then it was mm -hmm. raining. And I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> so, um, so we don't want to concentrate the risk. So we diversify and spread the risk across multiple different farmers in a particular region. And that is, so you can't, we can't say to you, okay, this is the exact farm that you sponsored, but rather you sponsored a number of, your 200 cities has been dispersed across a number of different farmers across a region. I want to be, okay. so I hope that that makes some sense. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. All right. So let's say if I've got a land somewhere that I want um, grow for me to, I don't know, instead of like I'm um, sponsoring with money, what if I've got a piece of land, like an acre land um, in my village somewhere and I want grow for mm -hmm. me to do a project on? How does that work? Do you guys have Great something question. like that? Yeah. Great question. This question comes up all the time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I want to take a step back for a moment because this is one of the reasons why Grow For Me came about. Grow For Me came about when the, the four founders decided to cycle on a bike from Ghana to Nigeria. To Nigeria. I read about that. Wow. And they did that. And on their they were raising some money. And mm. on that journey, they realized so much underused land existed within Ghana. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, why mm. is there so much natural available resources, but they're not no being used? No one is used. using it. Exactly. And what they realize is that it's not being used because there's a lack of investment in the farming space. Mm. Now, uh, one of the, the core things that we are all about is how we, and I'm, I'm going to answer your question shortly, yes. but one of our core ethos is, is how do we close the gap when it comes to food security across Africa? Now, today in Africa, there exists 1.5 billion individuals, 1.2 billion. In 2050, in 30 years time, thereabouts, there will be approximately 2.5 billion people in Africa. Wow. Wow. Now today, with the 1.2 billion we have, can we feed everyone? Is everyone being fed? No. No. So how do we expect to feed the mouths in 2050 when today we can't even feed the individuals mm. that exist on the continent? Now the issue that exists is because there's a lack of investment in the agriculture space. And that is because when you think about a farmer, let me ask you, when you think about a farmer and you, in your mind and you look at a farmer, what kind of age group do you think of a farmer being? The old? There's my point. Around, yeah. No, yeah. A farmer typically, in most people's minds, is that they are older age, right? Yeah. And so with that, what is happening that farmers are aging. Now, typically in most sectors, you expect that the successors, their children, will take over from the work they're doing to ensure continuity. Now, what's happening is that their children, because they're not seeing the money in agriculture, they're running away. They're running away and going to the cities to go and do other jobs where they can see money. No one so wants that, to do farming. That's the point. It's yeah. not attractive to the youth. It's no, not attractive. No one wants to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, if those youth, if you can imagine the whole sector of farmers' children is now running away, who's going to be doing the farming for us in 2050? Oh, we'll have you know? to start importing from China, like we that's are the point. now. Th that's the point. But if we can help ourselves and invest mm -hmm. in agriculture, mm -hmm. we're going to ensure that the youth are going to be interested in it and they're going to continue what their parents have been doing to ensure that we are still growing and growing and growing. Therefore, by 2050, we can ensure that the narrative has changed. We can close the gap when it comes to food security, making sure food is accessible for everyone. Wow. So because of that, I want to come back to your question around, okay, you've got land available. Mm -hmm. Now, one, so we know that the land exists in Ghana. We know that. But we also have an obligation to our sponsors. You've asked me a question about what the risks are. Yeah. Now, if I took your land and I decided to work on it now, that is a risk. 
Why? Because I don't know the soil moisture content. I don't know if it's available for us to grow anything on right now. Has it ever grown anything? I have no idea. So we have, we, for, for, for our company right now, what we do is we only work with farmers that have been working on a particular land for minimum three years. Okay. That way, we know that it can grow that crop in that particular mm. climate, in that particular condition. Now, if you said to us, you've got your farmland, you've got a farmer, we would work with you to just to maybe manage the farm um, with our hands off so that after three cycles, we can then say, OK, great, we can now work with you because we've seen that the things it can actually grow in, in that region. But we do we get your question all the time and we will start to look towards doing that. But as you can imagine, for us to minimize as many risks as possible, Risk, yeah. we, we can't, especially when we're using other people's money, we can't necessarily say, look, we're going to come and work on your land for this purpose right now. But we're going to we're building a model where we can help you with farm management activities. Um, but that will be at a cost to yourself, for example. But in terms of bringing you the much needed resources that you might need, that will be once you've demonstrated three years um, worth of, of, of growth. Um, on that particular land. I hope okay, that answers your question. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. It's all about risk mitigation. I understand. Okay. So I've got the money now. I want to register. Can you take us through the process on the platform? Sure. Absolutely. So before I take us over to the website, simply yeah. there's you know five processes or five steps that you follow when you're wanting to get involved in growth for me. Mm -hmm. You visit our website, um, and as I said, there is a link directly um, that you could use. To, 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 to visit um, straight after this, underneath this video. Yep, it's um, going to be in the then, description section. Excellent. Um, you'll then pick a crop um, when you visit our website. You'll pay for it, you'll sit back, you monitor the progress of your crops. We will grow on your behalf and then you'll get back your profits plus your principal. And I'll, again, as I said, there could be risks involved, so mm. we can't guarantee you what the returns would be. But you'll get that and then you can grow again if you so wish to do. So let me take you to our website. When you click on the link um, below anyway, you'll take directly to the link um, to, to, to our website. So once you're on the website, you would see the crops that we have available. So currently, as of today, we've got maize available, pineapple, rice, and soya bean. Now, depending on your budget or depending on the crop you would like to sponsor, you can then choose whichever one. So for the sake of this call today, I'm going to choose maize. Now, for those people that like me from the UK, when I heard maize, it didn't really register. I know maize is corn on the cob, you know, so um, <laughs> that is how it registered to me. But corn, maize, z maize, whatever it may be, the corn on the cob, you can decide to sponsor this. Now, we put every crop in the measurement of a unit. So you're probably wondering, okay, I can see the price there, but what does that actually mean? How much am I buying? You are paying for one unit of maize to be planted. So one unit is the equivalent, and it's listed here, approximately one eighth of an acre. So and if you pick what is that? Acre, when you say one <laughs> eighth of an acre, so because I know okay. most of my audience are going to be like, so what is that? Is that like one? Okay. Uh, one plot of land or um Good yeah Good a guardian will be used to plots of land so this that's is what we're used to yeah half a plot of land this is half what a plot is. okay half a plot of land okay. So, that, okay so there's four plots typically in an acre four plots of land is in an acre, acre? and half okay. a plot of land is equivalent of one unit okay thank you so if you picture you're very welcome if you picture that that is the u that's how much we are planting on your behalf. So we plant mm. the seeds equivalent of a unit. If you wanted a plot of land to, for us to plant, you would pick two units. If you want one acre, you would pick eight units yeah. of this price. So this price is the price for half a plot of land, which is one unit, one eighth of an acre. Then you will see the return on sponsorship. So we give you a range in terms of what your return may be. Now, based on the Minister of Food and Agriculture and also the general expected results for when you're planting the equivalent of a unit, you are roughly expected to get between 9% up to 28% return on your sponsorship. 
that's a massive the... range. Yes, and I know where your question is going to. Everyone always asks us, why is yes, it such a cause... large range? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so my disclaimer once again is I can't guarantee you what the results will be, okay. of course, and I don't mm. want to do that. But this range is driven by two things. The first thing is the yield. Mm. A yield, in other words, is how much does it weigh once we have finished growing. Okay. So if we have planted a unit, so we've got the seeds and we've planted the unit and they've grown, and we get these corn, we get the corn at the end of it. You know the corn could be thin, fat, short, thin, heavy, short, whatever it may be. You don't know how much that is going to weigh. Do you? I mean, when you plant the seed, do you know how much that's going to weigh? You don't. Mm. But there is an average. We know that roughly when you go to the market and go and buy these corns, they're roughly going to be this size. If you saw it this size, you'll think there's something that's happened. If you see it this size, you know that you know yep. there's been some kind of genetically modified. Mm -hmm. But there is roughly a range that you expect these to be within. So that is one determining factor, okay? The, okay? the weight, the yield. The second is the price. You know that you can go to the market in Ghana, one market seller is selling it at this price and another market oh. seller is selling it at this price. Tell me about it. Oh. <laughs> and prices can not. just go off like any time. Ah, Ghana for pa. Anyways. Hmm. You see? So that is the two. So you've asked me about a range, but I can't tell you what the price this market seller is selling yeah, at. Yeah, I can't yeah, tell okay. you the, the weight that is going to be. But we know there is an average because you know when you go to the market, you're going to expect an apple to be this size. You're not expecting this size. You're, there is a range, right? Yeah. So it's those two variables which are the determining factors between this range that we're getting. And I'll explain that in more detail to you when we move on. But I'm glad that you, you've understood that. <laughs> Um, the next piece of information here is the farming start date. So when we're going to start. So you could be watching this video um, prior to the 10th of August 2021, or you could be watching it after the 2021, August, 20, August 10th. But just come back to our platform and you'll get to see the various crops that are available as of when. Yeah. And then you see when it will end. So this is roughly uh, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, roughly six months um, until for maize to grow. Now, that is when we will finish, that is when these crops would have grown and harvest and we will harvest and pick them, dry them, bag them, get them ready to sell. So you would receive your payout. And by payout, I mean your, pro your proceeds, your, your, your principal amount, plus any profits that may be due to you hmm. within two months of this end date. So you may say, Lorraine, oh, when am I going to my money? Yes. So you get your money if there's any due before April, but before the end of April. End of April, okay, yeah. So two months after this date is when you're due to receive your payout. And then you've got the location of the farm. So we sponsor a number of farms in a particular region. So you can always, anyone that is interested, wants to become a sponsor, you can of course come and visit. Um, the farms uh, just let us know you, that we can take, go with you for a trip. Just yesterday, someone messaged um, who's coming to Ghana, going to Ghana from the from from coming from UK, mm. and um, he's he's going to be in Ghana around the fifteenth. Um, so wants to know when can he go and visit the farms, and we just arrange that for them. So oh, wow. they're more than welcome to go and visit the farms whenever you're in Ghana. So let's say we're going to go with Mace. The minimum for you to sponsor on our platform is the price for any crop. So you can just come on board and you can sponsor one crop. Or you can say, look, I've got a budget of 5,000 cities hmm. or $5,000 or 5,000 pounds, whatever it may be, 5,000 Australian, whatever it may be, 5,000 rands, whatever your budget is, you can say, okay, I'm going to take that amount and I'm going to, everything on our website is denominated in Ghana cities. So let's say, for example, today you have a budget of $5,000. You will just convert that so you know how much you are spending. So we're looking at roughly 30,000 Ghana cities. I'm not saying you have to do this. I'm just using this as an example. You could, of course, start with one unit. Or you can say, look, I've got a budget of $5,000 and I'm going to sponsor um, up to 30,000 Ghana cities you would choose the number of units that will hit your budget. So you can use this button and it will flick it through to wow. 
whatever your budget so the be. website does everything for for us it correct. just does everything oh. all right so we are looking at roughly roughly okay let's say roughly 102 units is what you'll be sponsoring with that budget of approximately five thousand dollars five thousand mm. correct wow yeah so on the right hand side you'll see that you'll see the cost of production per unit so by cost of production this is the cost base mm. for the farmer to grow so to get the seeds the fertilizers etc to grow then we have a one-off 10 percent service charge for growth for me which covers off and it says it here covers the use of drone and satellite imagery the services for us to go and track transparency to, to track the monitor the farms on an ongoing basis the transportation the logistics so this is just cost no one is making a profit from this this is okay. just a cost metric right and then that will show you okay that is a total payable that's just a one-time fee mm. now your return on sponsorship that range you asked me why is the range so large you can see in cash terms the minimum that you'll probably be getting as a return and the maximum of what your return may be and now, that's pretty good wow yes indeed so wow. that means in your bank you will get back or whichever method you ask your money to come back your principal amount will come back plus, plus your the range from that to that correct from correct. two okay wow correct now you ask that question about why is the yield, why is the range so a bit large? Yes. So down below is where you see the information that you need. Now, based on how much you have requested for us to plant on your behalf, you would see the average that we should expect in terms of kilos, in terms of the weight of the maize. So once we've grown and planted the 102 units, 102 units you have picked, Imagine we planted all those seeds. At the end of February, we will go and pick all of those crops and then we will weigh it. There should be an expectation of how much weight we are expecting to receive. And that is what is listed here. So on the low side, it will be between 25,500 kilos or up to 31,875 kilos of maize. That is wow. the range that we're expecting. Now the selling price, as you so know, when you are bartering, you're selling, you're trading, there is never going to be, we can't say in six months time, the price of maize per kilo is going to be one city, 50 pesos. We don't know, mm. but we know it's a range. It, 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 it's never going to be five cities, right? We know in the next year, it's not going to be five cities. We know it's going to be roughly, we know it's not going to be 50 pesos, but we know it's going to be somewhere in between one city, 37 pesos up to one city, 45 pesos to trade maize, right? Roughly. I mean, mm. this is industry standard right now in Ghana. Yeah. So if we take these two variables and we multiply them by each other, that is what's giving us our return on sponsorship. So okay. the low side and the high side. Okay. And that yeah. is what will determine what your profits would be. So you will get 50%. The farmer will get 35%. And grow for me, we get the lowest amount. We get the, the facilitator amount, um, 800 Ghana cities um, from that transaction. Wow. Most companies okay. take not less than 20%. So I'm very surprised Great For Me is only taking 15%. Indeed. Indeed. Wow. Great, great, great to mention that. So once you've picked and decided what you want, you can actually decide whether or not you want your proceeds back as cash or you would like it as crop. You might have a oh. business... You can say, look, you don't really trust farmers, you don't have any farmland, but you have a business in the food area, or maybe you want to start a pineapple juicing facility, or you want to start doing pineapple smoothies, or whatever it may be. You can decide, okay, I'm going to take this as crop. You've grown it for me, you've followed the right processes. You're going to say, I want to just receive the raw pineapple. I want to receive the raw maize. And you can decide to take okay, it Okay, so basically, I still get my principal, then I can take um, the crops and just put my brand on it. Is that what you're saying? Not necessarily. Your principal now becomes a crop. Okay. All so right. you're, All right. yeah. So you're, you're, and I've probably got a, an image that can show. And it's a great question. Um, I, I've got an image that will share, show you what that, what that means. So you can decide to take your proceeds either as cash or crop. Now, if you want to take it as crop, because maybe you want to do your own, let's take rice. 
We yes. know in Ghana, in two years time, the government is going to put a ban on the import of rice. So herein lies an opportunity. Are you sure? Correct. Herein okay. lies an opportunity. You can start to grow your own rice because the market is going to demand it and you can brand it how you want to and then mm. try to sell it. Okay. Mm. So what will happen is we will grow on your behalf. But because we, remember, none of us get a profit until we've sold the items. We yes. have to sell 50% to pay the farmer and ourselves. You will then be entitled to the remaining 50% of the proceeds so that you can then do whatever you want with it. Okay. Or you can say, look, I don't interest it. I can come and just take the cash, which is where you would receive your 50% profits. Okay. And okay. the principal amount. Yep, makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yep, yep. Thanks so, for that. No, very, very welcome. So once you've decided, you can uh, pay for the crops in one of three ways. You can pay with your bank card, um, both locally within Ghana or internationally outside of Ghana. If you've got a Visa MasterCard, you can make that payment. We've also got Stripe now as well, so you can make a payment through Stripe. Wow. Or you can pay if you're local in Ghana through mobile money. Or as we know now, there's a lot of remittance apps where you could use SendWave, Tap Tap Send, World Remit, Wise, etc., to send mm. mobile money into Ghana. Or you can do a direct bank to bank transfer. If you're in Ghana, you can physically go to the bank and deposit. Or you can use a remittance app um, once again to transfer the money into our bank account. So you'll do that, you'll click confirm the terms and conditions, and you'll pay now. And that will then get you into the system so that you can now become a growth for me sponsor. Sponsor. Wow. So let's say you're now a sponsor growing. Let's say it's now past the 10th of August, which is when we were due to start. You'll come back to your farm. You'll come back into the platform. We'll notify you that we're farming. That's an example ones here. Uh, we'll notify you that we started farming come back to the back end of the platform and you start to see how it is progressing through the process. So let's say for example you start with the work, you can see that the land preparation activity has commenced. Wow. Then you get to see the planting stage. So interesting to me especially as someone who came in to grow for me without any agriculture experience in my mind when they're planting seeds I used to think about it in a mechanical way that there was a tractor and it'll go and it'll just grind us and plant yeah but but just in plant Ghana, the seeds. yeah in Ghana and excuse my ignorance because I was new to this but what's industry standard is that you take a stride you take one stride and you plant the seeds when you're doing it manually and that, because I asked, I remember going up to the farm one time and I asked him, how do you know that when you grow this maize, it's not going to come into this and block this one? <laughs> yeah, and block the other maize, yeah. Yeah, but they said, no, what we do, we take one stride and that's interest in, that's industry standard and say, if you take one stride as the man is doing on the picture and you plant the seed there, that, and then you take another stride and you plant another seed, that is the approximate, um, uh, uh, um, uh, measurement or, or not so, what's the word I'm looking for the space in between mm. one plant to another plant so that for me was interesting uh, apologies to anyone that already knew that okay. but that was that's, that's uh, great for me like have any plans like you know in the future of investing into like machinery for these farmers great question great question so the next step for us is that we're going to enable our, our sponsors mm. to get involved in actually equity investing Okay. So because there is machinery required, there is also plant uh, processing facilities. So right now we're just dealing with raw crops, but there's a next part of the value chain, which is the processing part. So very soon we're going to release on our platform the ability for anyone to invest in machinery as well as processing facilities as well. So okay. you can actually become an equity holder in okay. some of these areas as well. So that's okay. something we'll plan to do. Can't wait for that. <laughs> So on the platform, there's also satellite imagery so you get to see where um, approximately the land is. You can get to monitor it from the satellite imagery as well. It's just loading up for me. So you'll get to see that appear as well. Do so we get to see it. the farmers? Sorry, do we get to see the farmers? 
like the actual so farmers. Like, mm. If you would like to visit the farms, then you get the chance to visit the farmers. And very soon okay. we'll be doing a lot of, um, we'll start to, you know, propose or prepare some interviews on our platform so you get to see the okay. farmers that we work with, etc. But you're more than welcome always to kind of come and visit and you can get to meet the farmers that we work okay. with. Okay, okay. So, I would like to take you just through just the few remaining things. Um, when we are due to make a payout to you, we will notify you and there's one of four ways that you can receive your return. So if we have um, traded this item successfully, then there'll be a profit that we do back to you. Now you can receive it one of four ways and I'll just share my screen so you can see that here. Um, you can see that you can actually receive it to an international bank account. Um, so any bank account outside of Ghana. However, to be clear, there's a $40 charge flat fee on that. And I'm sure most people that are outside of Ghana, you know how hard it is when you want to take money out of Ghana. Yeah, the government that's understandable. That yep. in, they do that. Um, they all want money to come into the company, but they don't, in, into the country, but they no don't want money No one wants money, money leaving the country, no. So they'll, put, they'll stick on high fees. So that's not a cost to us. That is a bank charge for us mm. to send the money out. The second way is that if you're local within Ghana, it's a small 25 Ghana city um, charge to receive the money into a bank account. Or you can get it onto a virtual card. Now, a virtual card is denominated in Ghana city. So it's basically a virtual visa card. So you can use that card online. You'll be issued a 16 digit card number and security number. So whenever you're making a payment online, you can simply enter in those details and you'll be deducted from that virtual card. Okay, so who gives out that virtual card? Great for me? No, it's issued by the bank. So we're between Absa Bank and GT Bank at the moment. So one of those okay. banks will issue the virtual card to you um, okay. in a secure way where you will then be given the, the, the You'll be, you'll be, your, your amount will be loaded onto that card and okay. can use that card as you would do maybe on Amazon to make purchases or wherever okay. you would like to make purchases. And then lastly, there's mobile money. So those people within Ghana, you've got your mobile money wallet, you can see the payout to your mobile money wallet. Okay. okay? So yeah. those are the ways. Um, why us? One of the most important things that people ask us is how do we protect um, some of the farms? Now, one thing we do do is we protect the principal um, in the event of flood or drought conditions. Now, I'm going to be very clear on this. This does not work the same way that maybe car insurance works. Let's say, God forbid, that you're driving and God forbid there was an accident, your car totally was written off. Um, you can go to your insurers and you can get a replacement vehicle to the value of whatever your insurance was. Our insurance in agriculture works ever so slightly different. It's the insurers who determine what, the, what the, the event, the trigger point is. So the insurance are monitoring the weather conditions and can tell you because your farms are in this location, we can pay you out a certain amount because we know that your farms are being affected by this weather condition. Okay. So up to 70% of the principal in those two conditions as judged by the insurers may be protected. Secondly, we are a registered broker on the Ghana Commodity Exchange. So anyone is welcome to visit the Ghana Commodity Exchange website, search for registered brokers or memberships, and you'll be able to see us listed there just so that you understand that we are a known entity within Ghana. Number three, we get our hands dirty so you don't have to. Mm. Um, and then I love we that part. <laughs> We also, how, however, when I went to go visit the farms, I got dirty. I was like, this is not what I signed up for. <laughs> that was um, just once. Come on. <laughs> I, I know, I know. Um, and we leveraged the satellite imagery um, to maximize yield. So we actually work with satellite images um, so we can track and monitor how much um, yield we're expecting. And within this pandemic that we are still very much within, um, it's taught us that food is always, always, always in demand. So, you know, it's, it's one of the necessities in life other than Wi-Fi that people say is a necessity nowadays. Um, but uh, food, water and shelter is always going to be in demand. Yes, so yes, why not put yes. money when it's always going to be? You can demand. never go wrong investing in the food industry. I always tell my oh. audience this, yes. And if you eat a lot, because me, I, sometimes I eat like five times a day. See, so... Investing in, a, don't judge me. <laughs> no comment. 
<laughs> no comment. Yeah, yeah. Invest in agriculture. You never go wrong with this. And this is so, so, so good. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Okay. Absolutely. Now, my... Okay, okay. I'll, I'll let yeah, you conclude. Then I'll ask my last question for Feel today. free. I mean, just lastly, just so people see the faces behind the company. Mm-hmm. Um, the CEO is Nana. Um, he is a serial entrepreneur. Some people in Ghana may know about a fintech called My Church Pay, My Business Pay. He, Asoriba, he is a founder and CEO, previously the CEO of that company. And wow. he's taken the skills and he's um, used it to develop um, this amazing platform. We've got our head of farming operations um, who um, oversees all of the farming activities. Ganapathy, who's based in India, who oversees international trade activities. Uh, Godfred, who is the CTO of the company building this amazing platform. Um, Debbie, who's the off-taker manager, who manages all of the off-takers who are buying the produce. Myself, in the middle, who oversees all of the sales activities. So if anyone's ever interested and wants to find out more, feel free to reach out to me, which is my email address, Lorraine at growforme.com. And we have our shareholder, um, which is Kwame as well. Just so you see the faces, it's important for you to know who is behind a company that you are investing in. And that is it. That is all from me at Grow For Me. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Okay. I, I, thank you so much. But I basically have two questions. Do you have any referral programs? Like um, if I refer a friend, do you guys have like an incentive to motivate me to keep referring more people? Great question. So yes, we do. Um, but first and foremost, anyone that is watching today and interested, please use Prince's link down below um, to sign up. Um, Please go anyone, down now. <laughs> <laughs> anyone that, um, if you are coming on board as a sponsor, everyone has a chance to, to earn five cities. Just like maybe when you're referring someone on Uber or a Bolt or whatever it may be, mm-hmm. you refer a friend, you will earn five cities for every friend that you refer. That's anyone that's sponsoring today um, as a sponsor. You, once you wow. come on board, you'll be given a, um, a, a referral code on the link. You can then share that with your friends and family, and then you'll get five cities, Ghana cities, for every person um, that sponsors today. That's pretty good. Thank you so much. And now my last question. Okay, so I've got a bit of, um, you know, we, um, we are in the world of cryptocurrency. Yeah, so I've got a bit of Dodge coins and Shiba Inu and all that. So yeah. let's say um, um, if I've got, I don't have like 5,000 laying in my bank account, I've invested all in um, crypto. Mm. Does um, Great For Me have any future plans of accepting uh, um, crypto? Great question. I mean, the way the world is going right now is inevitable that, you know, all companies are going to have to look at amazing means to accept mm. cryptocurrency. Mm. I can't say if that's on our, our, our one or two year uh, plan right now, but it's definitely okay. something we will consider, um, especially okay. when it comes to making payments and also payouts. We'll certainly be looking into cryptocurrencies and we'll also be able to do that. So yeah, stay tuned and hopefully tuned. Race okay. you get a chance. To do I that. love the sound of that. Thank you so much, Lorraine. Yeah, I thank know you, you are really, I, I call you the boss lady. So thank you so much, boss lady. Yeah, for, for having time <laughs> to speak with my audience. Um, I'm going to leave her details down below. If you've got any um, questions, I'll try to answer. But if I can't, I'm going to link up um, her details down below. Please go to her and um, ask her any questions and, and okay. she will answer. Yeah, please, 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 please. Thank you so much. Thank yep. you. Yep, and, and it's a pleasure having you on Startup Hustle. I'm going to do a tree version of this by myself. Yeah, yeah, because I know I've got a lot of audience that um, um, love the tree content that I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, so I'm going to do another version. So I'll still come to you if I need more help um, and if I need more um, um, like details and more enlightenment. Thank you so much, Lorraine, for Thank joining you. us today. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, until we meet next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>